know I am, Playa. Can you hear me? Yep, I turned your headphones by down by mistake. What about now? Okay, yay! Okay, yes, thank you. No problem, no problem. All right. <clears throat> hey, welcome to another episode of the Blackout Tips Podcast. I'm your host, Rod. Joined as always by my co host, Karen. And we're live on a Tuesday, ready to do some podcast and find us everywhere you get podcasts. If you're a premium listener, just letting you know, Balls D Sports will be Friday this week, not Thursday. So if you're looking out on Thursday, you don't see a show up. That's why, because we're doing it on Friday. Um, the official weapon on the show is the taser, an unofficial sport, bullet ball, and bullet ball extreme. All right, let's get into the stuff with the show, okay? Um, Although I guess I did have a couple of random thoughts. Okay. Uh, just random stuff that I be thinking about every once in a while. I need to start dropping mine down too. You don't always cover this section, Mm-mm. but uh, random thoughts. Random thoughts. Let's get into these random thoughts, okay? There's only a couple of them that I had. One. I'm surprised Cheetos dust isn't sold in the spice aisle at stores. That's a good thing, right? And that I, shit was sale. Some people try to tell me like Trader Joe's has cheese powder or some shit. No, mm-hmm. I mean Cheetos, Cheetos TM dust. directly from Frito Lay. Yeah, I'm surprised they don't do it because, especially like flaming hot Cheetos, because mm-hmm. I see a lot of. Uh, online recipes and stuff where people make stuff with flaming hot cheetos and then they like you know people claim to like that shit you know i don't mm-hmm. i've never eaten any yeah flaming like, hot cheetos anything that wasn't flaming hot cheetos you know what i mean <laughs> yeah they crush them and shit yeah yeah but they crush them like they go through all that effort to mm-hmm. make the powder and i'm right. like huh I'm surprised that they don't see the market opportunity to just fucking sell it like people probably be snorting that shit adding it to we like fentanyl and shit. No, yeah. I don't know. They put in all types of shit. Um, I saw an ad for the black phone, mm-hmm. and I was gonna go see it, but then I read some reviews, and it wasn't about what I thought it was gonna be about. Um, I thought it was gonna be just like about a phone in an African American house. <laughs> you know, a different type of black phone because it still could have been a thriller. You know, oh, yeah, like who that calling at this time of night? Come on, don't answer that. You know, uh, it that's the that's the uh, that's the bill collector. <laughs> yes, have a little kid here before some parent go off. You ain't know not to pick up this phone, right? You don't hear it storming outside. Turn that, turn, get off that damn phone, turn that shit off. Got this little fast ass girl calling my house, you know, stuff like that. It could have been, <laughs> could have been the black phone a different way, but yes. And instead, we got whatever the hell that horror movie is, and I'm not interested. Yeah, false they, advertising. They say it's good, but I, but horror ain't my thing. I hate when the power goes out because every time when it comes back on and I turn my PlayStation on, it kind of makes you feel bad, like it was your fault the power went out. Oh, why you say that? Because well, the the scr- the screen on the PlayStation is. It, it's it's kind of the the text is kind of scoldy. But what does it say? You 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 turned me off in the middle of doing some shit. Yeah, it's it's, it's it make it sound like you did the shit to it or something. I I don't I don't know why it, I don't know why it does this, but it's it's it says <laughs> uh it says something to the effect of like don't turn me off no more. Oh shit! Yeah, the PS4 was not turned off properly properly before you unplug the AC power cord. Uh, da, da, da. if you unplug the AC power cord when the power indicator is on the PS4, it is lit or blinking. Da, da, da. Like it just it, ah, like the computers used to be like, Hey, you didn't turn me off right. Yeah, the extended storage device you just connected was not disconnected correctly the last time it was used. If an extended storage is not removed correctly, data loss, corruption, or damage might occur. The disconnect and extend it. It's like, nigga, I didn't disconnect nothing. <laughs> The power went out. The power went out. What? Why are you? <laughs> Why are you yelling at me? Yeah, we get it. You think I wanted the, the shit to lose my save? <laughs> no, I did not. But yeah, it does this every fucking time. And there's does it show a blue screen of death too? Shit. <laughs> it should allow me to put an option like, "Hey, I, it wasn't my fault." <laughs> it wasn't my fault. 
calm down, yeah. PlayStation 5. <laughs> it ain't my fault. Everybody ain't out to get you, okay? <laughs> I am not the enemy. Uh, Instagram is TikTok now. Yeah, they all mimicking each other. It's TikTok, okay. And I know some people, maybe they didn't get the update because I saw my girl Nick Jew was saying how she didn't get the update. So she don't oh, know about is. that they done turn reels into like, re like it's really changed the feed. And it's not mm -hmm. the typical complaints where like they move a button at the bottom of the screen, which I, I do understand how that can be annoying, but you know, you don't only get used to that. Like Yeah, they normally change it. And, and I know Facebook does this too. Like certain buttons that you that people consistently hit, they'll rotate them around purposefully. So you get to hitting some shit. You're like, I don't want this. Right. Um, but yeah, it's basically like it is basically what TikTok like TikTok's kicking their ass. So they basically try to turn to video as the vast majority of what's on their site. It is. And now. so if you post a video, that'll that's more likely to go straight to someone's feed. Than Whereas picture. if someone posts still picture, it's much less likely to go to the feed. Mm -hmm. Some of them slip through, but I'd say my feed right now is about 75% videos. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those videos are from people I don't follow, where it's like, follow this person, follow them, you know. Um, and and while I, listen, I'm on there for the butts, okay? We all know this. But, you know, my friends' pictures and the still pictures used to show up. My friends mm -hmm. mostly take still pictures. Like, right. My friends don't, you know, they don't all post reels and shit. And it doesn't show your stories. It shows your reels. Right. So, you know, there's a lot of people that I don't see in my feed anymore. They just That I used to see all the time. Same. So, you know, I think, there, you know, there's something to the fact that, like, I, I know people complain a lot oh, for just the most bullshit reasons. But I can't understand why people are complaining about this. When it, 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 And it really just shows you how much and how desperate Instagram and Facebook are. Because Facebook's thing is we just buy companies that we can't compete with, change their shit so that it's not competing with us no more, mm -hmm. which is what they did to Instagram and WhatsApp and all this yep. shit. And but they stopped, can't buy TikTok. Mm -mm, and it stopped innovation and creativity and all that shit. And they like, fuck it. Right. So, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, I just, I just, I was scrolling. And I just realized, oh, wait, because I had a TikTok app. I had the app on my phone a long time ago and I just ended up deleting it because I just, I didn't really like it. It wasn't my thing. And there's no, no, no offense, you know, each different apps for different people. Mm -hmm. And I'm not a TikTok person. Um, so, but I remember thinking like, eh, this isn't for me. But when Instagram became TikTok, it was like, oh, wow. That's how powerful TikTok is. It is. Uh, I listened to a podcast that talks about marketing mm -hmm. and they, they talked about these types of things and they basically keep me abreast on and, and it's a running joke, but they call it who's copying who. And so basically they they talk about how all these sites are literally copying each other. Even um, what is it? The the, the one for the for your jobs. Crap. Is it indeed? LinkedIn. LinkedIn, yes. Okay. Yeah. And even how, you know, LinkedIn is starting to pick up some of these things and kind of slowly but putting them on their sites too because all linkedin is is like a social media for jobs but it's still a social media platform because the amount of time that people spend on these other platforms some people spend that amount of time there they don't spend them on those other platforms but they spend it there so so it slowly became a connection place and i know there are people that have found jobs on those sites i'm not knocking that but for the vast majority of people they do not find jobs there Right. But that's how they pushed it and promoted it, you know, because I was going to get an account. But I was like, no, nah, I'm good. The, the fuck, I might as well do what I've been doing because I'm not guaranteed nobody's going to go into um, uh, find me there, you know. Mm -hmm. And like I said, there are people that uh, have found jobs and have connections and all that stuff. Great. But for the majority of people, that's not true. They find jobs outside of that and then go to LinkedIn kind of once they found their jobs. It's almost like a personal working profile for a lot of people, which is fine. And so that goes back to the copying who, yeah, they're picking up a lot of the, the things. I know for them, they- I mean, but is LinkedIn going to turn into TikTok? I, I don't know, but LinkedIn just started a, a had just added a feature 
where you can, if somebody says something, you can repost it because they didn't even have repost over there. Like that's how mm -hmm. old they are. And now they're talking about doing repost with uh, comments. And people was like, no, don't bring that over here. Cause they was like, that's Twitter. And all you're going to do is have snarky comments over, <laughs> over shit. And they was like, well, I didn't come here for this. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, um, it's interesting because like you say, everybody's like, well, what's the biggest thing? And it's TikTok and everybody's slowly morphing into that, but everybody don't want TikTok, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you know, and it's hard for them to understand that everybody don't want that. And uh, the thing is, uh there's a lot of pluses and minuses to tiktok but these social media platforms they just go well that's what everybody's doing so let's just do that and you're like well i actually just i'm here for the pictures that's what people don't a lot of people on instagram my ankles are like i didn't come here for this i would have went to tiktok if that's what the fuck i wanted yeah eventually all of them are gonna just be the same mm -hmm. like every app just gonna be the same and every time a new app comes along it's just gonna be a year until everybody's just the same over there because it seems like whatever the growth strategy for these apps was it was like infinite growth yes and never losses and never not being cool never not being cutting edge and it seems like all these uh especially these silicon valley like startup type of type of uh social media apps they never have a plan for when the shit just isn't gonna be the number one app forever yes and also this kind of happens when a lot of, like you said, a lot of these companies, they buy competition mm -hmm. because even with Twitter, Twitter was more innovative when there were several apps that were similar to Twitter, but could get you on Twitter. And they started pumping out all these features and just doing like all these great things. And then all of a sudden, a lot of that innovation stopped. <laughs> That's what happens when they buy it because they go, well, we got you now. We'll just use your tools. But then what about the great next best thing? Because people are going to consistently look for what, what you're going to do next. And they get lazy and they get bloated and they're like, well, we're here now. And a lot of the innovation slows down. You don't have anything new. Everything is the same. Everything mimics each other. And they just like, well, people are just going to be happy. And that's not, that's not how it works. Eventually, somebody's going to come along with some brand new shit. And then they're going to move on to that. So, you know, that competition matters in these platforms, but everybody wants to be the king of it. And, you know, when, you, when you're the king of it, you know, if you're not running it right, the innovation leaves. So it won't challenge you because, you know, back in the day, Twitter didn't have retweets. Twitter didn't have quote tweets. Twitter didn't have, you know, it's, Twitter didn't have gifts. Like it took some of these other Twitter-like apps to have these features. And then Twitter started putting it on there because there were competition. All right, let's get into some other news. Uh, we got, uh, you know what? Let's. We don't have coronavirus news really. Um, nothing different is happening. Uh, President Biden's getting feeling better. That's so, a good thing. That's good. So I say we start with LGBTQ news. Let me see what you want to be. You better move your body. You better move your feet. And I want to grow. Show me what's cool. Riding, caring, baby. LGBTQ news. Woo! We're trying to take us down, but we still around. We lit. We lit. We lit. We still shine, but we on the ride. We lit. We lit. And we can't do what we're about to do. We lit. We lit. We lit. We lit. All right, let's talk about it. LGBTQ news. Um, let's see. Um, a trans athlete in New Zealand was denied entry into women's darts tournament. Talking about throwing darts, like uh, like the circle that you you do the the black, the red, and the green. Yes, yes, darts. Okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, Club New Zealand Darts Association President Duncan Ellis said the woman who identified herself only as V to protect her privacy wasn't banned from playing but could not play a next, week next weekend's tournament for clubs from the west coast of New Zealand's North Island until the organization had a formal transgender policy in place. But then you're banned. The fuck you talk about? Also, isn't, is darts one of, oh, I don't know. I, I, I didn't even know darts was broken down by gender. I, me I, either. Like, so it's women compete against the women men in darts darts my nigga i, I don't know. i mean i don't want to disrespect a sport but i mean i guess it's that serious for do is, is it like what i i, I don't, I don't know. know what i don't know the rules advantages right I mean, um, doing darts 
yeah so this is gonna be her struggle to get equality to throw darts at for the darts association yeah i, I would push um, it to i don't know if it's something about the speed you know it's, again it, it's something but even with that i do i i just don't understand his darts yeah um it's interesting too because if you don't have a policy you could be like you can play right like it like you you know what I'm saying like it doesn't you don't have a policy yeah like it's like you're kind of tipping your hand on what you're going to decide here if you're going we don't have an official policy yet but you can't play yeah and it's then like, they well, go, legally I'm banned you go you're not banned the fuck I ain't you yeah. don't have a policy and you telling me I can't participate legally I'm a woman um what what are the other qualifications because y'all don't have any rules about this right now so yeah I, I don't know um and also like is this the idea that people have is this person train change their gender to be the best at darts in new zealand in women's darts is is that the idea <laughs> like oh uh, so oh you know how they do they tricked us they go. They got me whooping our asses in darts. Go, go get a whole surgery just so they can. Oh God! Anyway, it, everything's a fight. Uh, shout out to New Zealand. Mm -hmm. um, school district approves guidelines to out trans students to classmates' parents. What? Uh, Florida school board uh, unanimously approved a new set of guidelines that critics say would uh, allow school officials to out trans and non-binary students uh it's a bill that requires students i mean requires um the school to notify parents if a student who is open about their gender identity is in a physical education class or will be present on an overnight trip so do you tell everybody uh, the gay kid is coming on the overnight trip that sounds reasonable to y'all right while the guy notes that all students must be allowed to access locker rooms and restrooms consistent with their gender identity the provision is meant to allow parents of other students to request reasonable accommodation op options for their cisgender uh, kids so basically everything we know about children and trans children the people who are bullied the people who are ostracized the people who are picked on are the trans children right but in the they reverse the polarity with the rules and they're like oh my god we need to protect our cis children from these trans children i need to be notified if there's going to be a trans child anywhere around my child i need the option to have reasonable accommodations what the fuck could that mean what's a reasonable accommodation when everything's already accommodated for your ass you not being there that's reasonable accommodation basically mm -hmm. you not being there that's what they're saying what you mean you not it. being there who is you the the, the trans person not oh, being there okay. that's reasonable accommodations right. because they know once everybody knows you're going to feel that fear uh, unless you're very secure and just be like fuck it they know that you being there is going to be a problem they know you're going to get picked on and they know you're going to be bullied so what they're basically saying we're going to tell everybody just so you have to deal with being an outcast and so even if you do choose to participate it's going to be a horrible trip it's going to be a terrible trip it's going to be problems happening it's going to be people who didn't know it's like like the whole purpose is so that you can be the center of attention regardless of if you want it to be or not and you know children are very timid at certain ages and and learning themselves and going through hormone just hormonal changes period and then you know having to deal with this the whole purpose is that you opt out of all these trips i think the ultimate point of this rule is that you don't be trans at school right like what else could it be i mean think about in practice what it's going to end up being okay you're an openly trans child um or honestly openly trans is actually a huge misnomer here because a lot of trans children are not quote unquote openly trans like mm -hmm. you know they're as far as unless you know that kid and their family and all their business that's just a little girl or a little boy um for most of or if it just doesn't come up that could be non-binary it's just 
it don't come up so it ain't really your business unless it's like something that becomes everybody's business kids might not tell you that so then the effect of it's going to be oh i'm going to tell all the parents of all the kids and that is going to ostracize that trans child and that trans child has to go back in the closet or away or transfer schools or just hey don't come to school uh openly uh don't come to school dressing as a gender that you are uh, like that uh, the gender that they don't want to see you as that's that's really what's going to end up happening yeah, the and they, they they try to turn it into and it's that thing you know christians are the real victims straight people are the real victims white people are the real victims everybody's the real victim uh when it comes to like those type of laws yeah and don't think it ain't gonna stop there you know mm -hmm. they pass this law and always go back to race it is it, it you know a lot of this will eventually go back to racial divides and shit like that you know i don't want to be around this person or that person or whatever whatever it is that they opt is the other and all of a sudden i won't fear accommodations uh democrats introduced transgender bill of rights to fight republican anti-lgbtq attacks um uh, the bill will uh so it's a house of representatives bill which mean which we have the majority there as far as democrats are concerned so it you know doesn't mean it will pass senate this may just be you know something that show people like democrats are fighting but you know ultimately don't have the numbers right it's one of those things where i, I goes back to i understand it's optics it we want people on the record type of thing i understand that but the reality is this shit is not gonna get money probably gonna be bought up in the other place and uh every person that voted against this in the house is gonna probably be broken right right um the bill would ban discrimination against gender identity and expression and public accommodations employment housing and credit now keep in mind under obama they just added this language or started interpreting the language federally as like sexual orientation basically count that as gender identity and all that stuff right mm -hmm. And that's how they were able to pass so many things that were inclusive to trans people. But they never legally, like they didn't go get a vote in the Senate and the House to, to, it was because they didn't have the numbers. But then also like, it was like, we got y'all. We Like, we not even going to wait on that. We just going to do it with our administration. And this is the way we're going to treat things with our Department of Justice, everything. Trump comes in immediately, reverses all this. Boom. Republicans, you know, obviously don't treat trans people, uh, their rights, uh, this way at all. Right. Right. Biden's in charge. Boom. He is back. We, we just hit the day one. No, no fights, no arguments. Just, we are treating things this way from this point on. We are arguing for the rights of trans people against discrimination for trans people, stuff like that. Okay, cool. That's great. But then you had a Supreme Court overturn Roe v. Wade. Yes. Now everyone's running scared trying to quote unquote codify these laws, even though this president would never treat trans people that way. We there's a, a push to codify things that people thought was settled mm -hmm. that weren't settled, obviously. Right. That's why they quit fighting. Yeah. So um, the bill would also ensure access to gender affirming medical care, uh, including abortion and contraception, and would ban forced surgery on intersex children and infants. Intersex individuals are often subject to unnecessary genital surgeries before they can provide informed consent. The bill will be called banned so called the bill would ban so called conversion therapy, the pseudo scientific form of mental torture that purports to deter trans and non binary people into cisgender people. Uh, a lot of abuse. Yeah. The bill would also invest in community service to prevent anti-trans and anti-binary violence, as well as mental health services to assist survivors of violence in other communities. It's a great bill. It won't pass mm -mm. the Senate. You know, it'll pass the House probably. It won't mm -hmm. pass the Senate for mm -hmm. sure. It won't even hit the floor. Um. So it's, yeah. And, and sadly, like I said, I... I don't want to be right about this, but I, I'm afraid we are going to find out that um, uh, 
even codifying these things won't matter. Nope, not with this Supreme Court because it don't matter. All they got to do is be like, we don't care. Yeah, like I'm, I'm afraid. Strike it down. Yeah, I'm afraid we're gonna. That's what's gonna happen. Uh, we failed. Gay Republicans who fought for acceptance in Texas GOP see little progress. Yeah, the log cabin Republicans are watching their party get more and more anti-gay. When they pass, when they pass or propose these don't say gay laws, they're not stop, like that's the thing, man. They start with something that a lot of people are okay with because they're not a part of it. And, right. and they don't know anybody. So they're like, yeah, trans people, I don't know any. The only thing I know is pose or some shit or TV show or or I don't know nothing about it. I'm mad. I don't want it. I'm an intolerant person, blah, blah, blah. And they go over there and they line up behind that shit. Uh, Republicans do. And they're like, yeah, yeah, fuck them. And then it just starts going. <laughs> it just starts trickling down to your ass. Yeah, eventually it's going to be your stuff. That's why when they first started this, I was against it and I'm fighting against it. I might not be part of the group or part of the community, but it does not mean that what's wrong is wrong. You know, and mm -hmm. that's like me. I, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, when issues come up for black people, issues come up for women, you know, other people who might not be impacted by this group, you know, impacted because they're not a black woman, you know, could be like, hey, I'm not a black woman, but hey, this is wrong. But when everybody is just so concerned about me and mine and don't give a fuck, you don't care about nobody else getting washed away until your house is flooded. Yeah, and part of me, of course, is like, fuck these motherfuckers. Like, these are the coons of gay people. These are the, you know, part of me is, of course, you know, the same way I feel when I see a black person bemoan racism about, but still be over there with Republicans. But at the same time, it's like, it's, it's, it's sad because these people thought we can go over there, show them that gay people meet all these respectability qualifiers, and somehow we will change the Republican Party's heart and we will make them more accepting and more tolerant. And that has nothing could be further from the truth. If right. anything, since 1998, you've lost ground. It is more homophobic than before you went over there. So it is actually, um, you know, it's a, it's very, it's a pyrrhic victory for people like me where I'm, because it's like, fuck y'all. But it's also like, this is terrible because y'all are never going to vote Democrat more than likely. You don't believe in their ideals. And at the same time, um, I can't feel too sorry for your ass because you're over there holding the torches and the gasoline like how I get on fire. Mm -hmm. you, um, didn't, you didn't think it was going to turn on you? Yeah. Uh, the, a gay Republican group was banned from the GOP convention. Right, because they don't want y'all there. Yeah, the log cabin Republicans is banned from that shit. So, yeah. Just, just it's crazy. stupid. And honestly, they they thank you for your usefulness, honestly. Right. They like, that's how they feel the about numbers. Christian Walker, too. Like, mm -hmm. they just, it's like, thank you for being useful to give us cover so that whenever we got accused of being bigots, rightfully so, we could be like, but what about the law cabin Republicans? And y'all were all too happy to be like, yeah, what about us? Now look at you. Yeah, now since they don't need you no more, they're going to set you on fire and you're still going to turn them on. And a percentage may turn, but the majority of them still going to be over there because actually you just like the shit that they do. You just don't like the gay shit. Well, the, the, the gay shit is one of their main talking points, so I don't understand. Right um let's see a right winger gets kicked out of uh pet smart for saying rainbow flags sexualize kids yeah sir this is a pet smart what, right I don't, I don't understand <laughs> also Do you want yeah. bird food or not oh my god what a dummy you you do you want this gold leash or not? And they be going trying to go viral because I believe he recorded himself. So he goes into Pet Smart and he's like, take this satanic rainbow flag out of it. He's recording it so he can put it on truth.org, whatever the fuck they, they got out. What is it? Truth it takes? I don't know, what sir. You're disturbing the animals. You this <laughs> they're resting. Get out of here. What is the name of that shit? Get her, truth her. Get her done. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is. I'm racist.com. They can't wait to post this shit. And so, yeah, he, he basically tries to get it taken down. Um, 
from the store just to go viral because you know these employees one not that the employees are bad people but they employees they don't give a fuck they just put up whatever the fucking store told them to put up it's june this pride month then we put rainbows up that's the way it is like they don't it's not like they had a personal conviction to put the shit up it's not their house like they don't care i'm just curious what is that flag right there that flag what is that flag i think it's a pride flag can you can you take it out keep in mind this man is at the checkout aisle with not nan item Sir, do you even have a pet? What are you in here for? Can you just take it down? What, you afraid the dog's going to turn gay? Because just they can't even see all the colors. They, they're colorblind. Just take it down real quick. Uh, I don't feel can, you, can you take it down? Oh, why is it I, I think it's a pride flag. Can you, can you take it down? Uh, let me refresh it. Cause, so, oh, for what never mind. Does it offend me greatly? Can I get a minute to the front, please? <laughs> Yeah, goddamn right. Not my problem, manager. Yeah, can I get a manager up to the front? Cause I'm not dealing with this. I don't blame them. Shout out to that manager. You know they're gonna sell them out. Mm-hmm. I it am don't so matter. sorry about that, sir. I'm taking the flag down. I've done that right before. now. Mm-hmm. You are you you taking the flag down yourself? Okay. Yeah, I've done that before, manager. And then just walk oh, away. call the manager. Mm-hmm. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm with that. No, mm-mm. oh, 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 manager. Uh, uh, yeah. uh, uh he, they didn't. He didn't ask for the manager. They offered it's him above up. above me. That, that's my motto. It's above me. You start asking for shit. I'm a, manager. That yeah, yeah. Because if I take it down, it's gonna be a problem. Manager. Well, my thing is just that the manager is normally the one to sell you out anyway. Of course. At these kind of jobs, they always be the ones like, oh, don't worry. I tell them I'm gonna give them peace of my mind, and they go out there and take the flag down and be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Rod is a terrible employee. I'm like, nigga, what? Yeah, that stuff. What he said? Can't have that. Especially at PetSmart. Especially at Pet. What's special about PetSmart? I don't know. Are the animals gay? Okay. He's waiting on a manager. It's like he's a. Excuse me. What is that flag? It's right like there? a bad skit. Can you take that down, please? No. PetSmart um, supports belonging, which includes for. LGBT. Do you support pedophilia and child sexualization? Because that's what that stands for, man. Oh. They're sexualizing kids with that flag, man. Well, okay, he got him, guys. Oh man, really? Oh, who knew? We all thought it was just inclusion, of, but apparently, we're all supporting pedophiles now. We didn't had no idea. I feel I'm very offended, and I would like it to be taken down. Well, well, we're gonna ask you respect to your customers, you? respect your customers, and please take sir. It down. You don't have anything in your hand. What are you purchasing in our store? You're not right. a customer. Also, it's hilarious that, um how non-committal he sounds to the bit oh yeah like he like he don't even sound like was he it be- a dare hmm? was it a dare does somebody dare you to go in there he don't even sound like he believe in what he says like well, uh it, it greatly offends me well, well sir we're gonna have to ask you to leave uh the, the customer's always right sir please stop uh what about pedophiles and children sir, sir get out our that's enough <laughs> Well, we aren't going to. We are supportive of LGBTQ plus people here, so we're going to ask you to, to leave. Do you know what the real, re- that's, that's the, that's the rainbow of Satan. The real rainbow is from God. The real rainbow is from God. Man. What is he, the, uh, there's a level of psychosis yeah, that's happening to, with these people. Yeah, trying to go viral. And not just that, but these motherfuckers be online in these circles. With these conservatives and QAnon type shit, and they really have their own language mm-hmm. and their own like facts because this is not the real rainbow. The real rainbow is from God. It's one of the most insane, ridiculous things I've ever heard in my fucking life. <laughs> what? That's like it's so a the, rainbow flag. See, this is why I can't be involved in shit. Like, because I would have been like, well, the American flag. Those stars aren't from God. Those are those. The real stars are from God. Those are just stars y'all painted on the flag. Ain't it though? Oh, the the yeah. Man, that's the rainbow of Satan. So it's very offensive to me. Very good. Thank you for coming by and sharing that with us. But we'll. Uh, you you, know, you don't that. support it, do you? I do support it. Yes. You support sex, sexualization no, of the children. The LGBTQ. You know what? The, you know what they're doing to the kids, right? They're they're they're. Where, 
to they're trying to they're, so you're, they're, you're uh, breaking the law now because we've asked you to leave and you aren't. They're sexualizing kids that with the, with that propaganda. It's disgusting. Yeah, Our country is going downhill yes, because so. of it. Wait, wait, can I get you to the front, please? We're asking you to leave. Soon. Wow, Peco, Peco sexualizes kids. They support the sexualization of kids. He's also wearing an anti-masker shirt. Like, bro, you did you have nothing else to do? Also, what is being anti-mask at this date? You Nobody's even, most people aren't wearing the mask. You don't even stand out anymore. You just not like you used to. Wearing that shirt means nothing at this point. No one's wearing a mask. Mm -mm, most people are not. Nope. Oh man. I don't like maybe he's just trying to go viral. Go viral. Like it's yep, go it's, viral. That's the whole purpose. But and a lot of it, all jokes aside, they quote unquote are mimicking black and brown and other people because they feel like this is what we do right but when we do our shit we're normally angry mad upset have a purpose behind it we're not just doing shit just because we don't have anything to do but in their mind they think it's a pointless fruitless recording i like the picture where he looks at the camera and someone someone looked at his mustache and the ah! way his eyes and they said this guy has a problem with pride flags. Who's gonna tell him? <laughs> <laughs> he got the the mustache that the dude from Monopoly got. Yeah, you know what's funny? There also was that dude we covered the other day that vandalized the store, and like he also had that effeminate quote unquote look. Mm -hmm. There was a dude that um when they went to go take guns to the prior parade and people was like this dude look like he could man get this man in some makeup he's got them eyebrows teased up to the gods he could be he could be over here in the drag uh competition like i don't it's like i wonder if these men are reacting this way because they're perceived as feminine or they have some internal struggle because who are you trying to prove this to yeah you ain't got to prove it to me well, I, it you know don't I mean? matter to me all right, last story. GOP lawmaker attends gay son's wedding three days after voting against same-sex marriage. <laughs> they, they don't even... They, they don't, don't even try. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> don't care about your son. Uh, what you mean? You voted against it, then you go to wedding. Oh, you, yeah. You don't yeah I mean, he don't care. Yeah, yeah. It's very... But it's just like... You're not even trying to pretend to have some type of standards of morals. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, this is crazy. Um, I think I had a news article. Hold on. Now, one of the Republican congressmen who voted against protecting same-sex marriage attended his gay son's wedding three days later. The Respect for Marriage Act passed the House last Tuesday, but 157 Republicans voted no on that bipartisan bill. Pennsylvania Congressman Glenn Thompson was one of them. He voted no. He said, nope, not gonna defend gay marriage. His press secretary argued it was nothing more than an election year messaging stunt. But after his gay son's wedding in a statement, his spokeswoman said Thompson and his wife were thrilled to attend and celebrate their son's marriage on Friday night as he began this new chapter in his life, adding they are very happy to welcome their new son-in-law into the family. What the fuck? What the fucking yeah. fuck? Because it's about, like I said, being a elected and he know that if he would have voted the, the pop the, the populace would not have voted for him that you know you your seat on the line but to be so opportunistic that you just throw your fucking child under the bus mm -hmm. like the blatant ridiculousness of this yeah I, i'd have been mad I, I i do not even know if i would have wanted you there and the fact that people even vote for this mm -hmm. shit you know um oh one more last one linda carter wonder woman Mm -hmm. uh she uh is out here saying listen macy gray bed midler shut the fuck up and leave trans women alone i cannot think of anything that helps women's rights less than pinning the blame on trans women she tweeted they face so much violence and scrutiny as is leave them alone and focus on the real war on women it's happening in the courts and legislatures around this country come on and I absolutely do agree with this. Come on like, through, Wonder Woman. Because the thing that 
goes unsaid with the Bad Midler thing, the Macy Gray thing, and all these women that are writing these pieces about like don't erase women from this. Women are getting erased. Women, I, I don't like birthing people. I don't like pregnant people. I don't like people with vaginas. I don't want to be reduced to that. Blah blah. blah. And, and like I said, there's something to the idea of erasure if you're talking about like um, organizations that won't use the term women, right? Which there can't be many of them, but mm -hmm. you know, I have seen a couple tweets here and there where it's like, oh, they they went out of their way to not say women, mm -hmm. even though women would be included in in, in, in the this group. discussion. Mm -hmm. It's you know, but but like literally, when I say a couple, I mean a couple. You know what I mean? Like, uh, uh, especially after Roe v. Wade, there were only a couple organizations that were like, we won't say women, but we're going to say birthing people. And, then, and it's like, you can say all of those, including mm -hmm. women, because mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely, it's abortion can be a women's issue without it being solely the purview of women, right? Agreed. But the, the, the false, um, the false weight that is put on trans people as if they are the ones deciding women are not women or some shit or they're the ones deciding cis het women should be dealing with more than they like we want to add to your oppression it's not happening mm -mm. it's just not happening Trans people don't have that kind of power in our government, in any organization, to be a, to be like literally writing the agenda of how society is going to operate. That's that's not happening. Mm -mm. So when you or like when you get mad at people for either being inclusive, using inclusive language, or uh, wanting to compete in sports or something like that, when you get mad about that shit and you go is it's so hard to be a woman. These damn trans people. It's like, are you not seeing who's on the Supreme Court? Who's voting on these bills? Who's passing them? Who's blocking the other bills? Right. That's not trans people doing that. So like, your I want to head out at trans people as a way to stand up for cis hat women. Is really turning into um, just another way to bully folks, another way to shit on trans people in a world where they're getting shit on enough. Mm -hmm. And I guarantee you, if you bring up your political agenda as a feminist and the agenda of uh, the trans community in general, it's going to line up pretty well. You're going to agree more than you disagree. Because a lot, a lot of it's about freedom and choice and empowerment and representation. Things that you kind of agree on in a lot of fucking areas. You know, I know a man, but, you know, I don't want to speak out of turn, but it seemed pretty fucking obvious that, you know, uh, the things that Macy Gray wants out of life are probably the same things that trans women want out of life. Same thing that trans people want out of life, you know? Um, but yeah, it just sounded, it, I thought it was dope that Linda Carter was out here because first they tried to use Linda Carter as an example, like this is what a real woman is. And Linda Carter was like, nope, uh, bi Wonder Woman bisexual, fuck y'all, it's being confirmed. And also, <laughs> fuck Bette Miller and Macy Gray because you know, they they not helping uh by turning this into this debate about trans women. And and this and this it zooms out to a bigger political cultural issue, which is this idea of both sidesism, which is mm -hmm. you know, Republicans may be banning kids from being trans openly in school. They may be banning the school from teaching kids about LGBTQ issues. Okay. They may be uh changing the law so that uh trans girls can't compete against trans girls in sports they may be doing this that and the other and that is bad but you know what else is bad the fact that they said birthing people what it's like it's like wait what it's like yes liberals say birthing people that performance they use inclusive language and that's just as and it's like it's not just as bad though 
Yeah. Even if you thought that is somehow bad, mm -hmm. it might be mildly annoying to you at best. at best. These other issues are keeping you from getting an abortion. Right. Those are so not you yada 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 and plans a lot of shit. And a lot of that, a lot of times it goes back to the performance. You just want to perform. You want to feel righteous. Yeah, it's just those those are not equally weighted. So, you know, I think people feel like they're somehow being objective by saying, well, I'm annoyed that I'm going to have to change my language. Or if I don't change my language, some people are going to judge me. Okay. that I can see how you might be annoyed. Change, people get annoyed by change all the fucking time. That being said, that's not even close to what the issues are that are affecting people right now. Mm -hmm. That's not a real issue. A lot of those are just online for the most part issues. Very liberal circle type of issue. It's not an everyday issue. Oh no. You're not going to walk into your fucking local grocery store and have a problem, but you won't be able to lock into your local Planned Parenthood in the 26 states. Like you would think that would be more fucking pertinent. But I, I think also, not to make it a racial thing, but I think a lot of this is from white women who don't understand what it's like um, on the scales of like further down than white than women. Correct. It's like I'm a woman, maybe even lesbian woman, but this is where the oppression stops. Yes. With, like like after me. I decide that's it. And they might, you know, they're the same people that don't want you to use uh, certain words in public, certain words in the boardroom, treat people a certain way. They understand policing language and inclusivity and diversity when it's them. The second that it becomes a step beyond them in any direction, they are ready to close the motherfucking barn doors and of say, course. everybody sit outside. Yeah, I, cause I decide for everybody. Yeah, like it's like I know Macy Gray is not a white one, but you know, it's like that level of like, I'm good with my shit. I want abortions. Mm -hmm. It's like, right, right, right. And you know, uh, there are people that could be trans men that want abortion. Ah, I don't know about all that shit. Uh, Y'all got to calm down. Okay, first of all, I'm not about to use no different words. So like, okay, all right. Right. And, and it becomes <laughs> a problem. And the thing is, I will continue to say this. It's the same thing that happened with the gay rights. A lot, a lot of white gays, their whole thing was gay rights. I mean, gay, gay mm -hmm. people across the board wanted it. But for a lot of them, that was the number one thing at the top of the agenda. Yeah. So once it got passed, they quit fighting. It settled law. Nobody cares about the black people and the and the other groups of people because we got what we want. Like you say, you you close the bond doors. And so now, since all of a sudden these rights are being taken away, you want to open up the bond doors and have us come in. It's like you want us there for the numbers <laughs> and you want us there for the 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 appearance, but you actually don't want us there because the second we're not needed, you're really quick to kick us out. Yeah, it goes all the way back to Ida B. Wells. Like yeah. And and that's why for uh, Sojourner True. That's why for a lot of, to an extent, I understand. You know, that's why for a lot of uh, black people, that's why whatever group it is, it's a black black feminist, black LGBT. Like we have to almost separate ourselves because we're like, no, 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 you don't give a fuck outside of whiteness and anything I bring up, you ain't trying to hear that. So no, we're gonna specifically say this particular group. So you know, when we coming in here, we not just talking about white people. All right, let's get into some other news. Um, uh, that Brooklyn bishop that got robbed at uh, gunpoint, mm -hmm. uh, he got he got into it on Instagram with some people. Um, with Larry Reed, uh, uh, I guess of Larry Reed live um, uh, about that robbery because he didn't like some of the way they was taking it. Oh, wait. Right. I gotta watch this whole thing? I'm not watching this Ooh, whole 51 thing. minutes. No, thank you. All right. This is getting too long. Um, uh, yeah, let me see if I can find the minute mark. Because, uh, nope. Nope. Mm -mm. Uh, but yeah, he got mad because they was laughing at it. Um, so, he, I guess he was mad at the beginning of it. Hello to each and every last one of you guys that are coming into this live right now. My name is Larry D. Reed, and I'm the host. Of All right, and the only 
get to the pastor, okay? We come don't... on. Come on now, Larry. Come on. Let me call. I'm going to call. Get pastor on the phone. Um, okay, that's his home did, girl. I'm not saying that the pastor had anything to Bad girl. Come on. Okay. Yeah, yeah, right. come on. Yeah. Not my life. No. All right, here we go. So be Y'all are okay. Hey, it's you are turning what happened to my church into a laughing stock. That's what I have a problem with because I gave you nothing but respect and nothing but honor when I met you. I treated you with nothing but respect, nothing but nothing but with straight integrity. And you want to sit here and talk about that I purchased my culinary when you bought yours. I never even knew you bought your culinary. I bought my culinary over a year ago. What's a culinary? And when we both met, I and let's keep know. it real. You know I'm broke because I don't even know I what that is. I don't know what that is. It's below my pay grade. Mm-hmm. Culinary? Mm -hmm. Larry, when we both met, when we was in Times Square, you said, oh, shoot, I got the same color culinary. I didn't even know you. I just met you. So why would I purchase, why would I purchase a truck like you have? I, I don't understand. Like, my, my, I don't okay, understand. Okay, that's and some then, type of truck. Young lady, right. I don't know you. But when you sitting here talking about I have thumbtacks on the wall, no, those no, those are backdrops. Those those are step and repeats. Okay, and let me tell and let me tell you, let me tell you, we I purchased a church. I own a church. I own a whole block, and that's a temporary church right now. I own the whole block. Okay, so so at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you guys are coming at me, and after what my what my church just. It's weird that. Um... I'm sure he's gonna get more into it, but it's weird that his first offense seemed to be about the them. It seemed to be like money gripes. Yeah, like y'all trying to play me like I'm broke. I own the whole block. That's not a temporary real. church. A I pride. I had my truck before your truck. I didn't know, you know. Like it feels like I'm like, is that the priority right now? Just went through, and y'all sitting here laughing and making a mockery of it, and you want to talk about. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You want to see him talk about cloudy diamonds? Nobody talking about your diamonds, brother. If you feel that your diamonds is better than mine, so be it. What? What? Why is it to the diamonds? It's about, yeah, because, yeah, a lot of this is, everybody been joking him. <laughs> and so he finally got a platform where he could talk but about. But he talking about having money, though. He's not talking, he's yeah. not talking about getting robbed. He's talking about having the money. Yeah, because y'all joke me, so how y'all gonna say I'm broke? Yeah, like mm -hmm. that scene where the offense was not how dare you make light of this serious situation, but mm -hmm. how dare you make light of my diamonds. Mm -hmm. so, so be it. So be it. Okay, no problem. No problem. <laughs> then you wanted then you wanted to talk to me about our discussion about you don't have to be angry. I'm being I'm not know. angry. I'm not I'm not angry at all, but at the end of the day, when I'm looking, my team sends me your live. Larry, I never disrespected you, brother. Okay. I treated you. I treated you with nothing but respect and integrity. So, from where this is coming from, I don't know. So, please inform me. Please okay. inform me. Number one, it's opinion. You're viral. My job is to talk about what is viral. I did you a favor. No, I don't need no favors from you, Larry. My, but my question to you is, you, you, Larry, you do though. You Larry, thought, you excuse do, me, you do. ma'am. I don't even know you, ma'am. All right, but so you can just stay out of this one. I don't even know you. All right, I don't even know you. You, you, you're, you're trying to include yourself into this. Angry. You need to go and get some weight loss if you want to get. If you, oh, 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 why? The, oh man, what a pass. If, if you want to get, if you want to get, sir, yes, yeah, so sir. Late. If you want to see okay. and laugh about what happened in my okay. church when we got arm robbed, you're fat. That's what you are. You're okay. A what kind of uh, I guess that's what Jesus was saying. No, sir. No, no, sir. Mm. Fat slob. I don't know. Mm -hmm. you, all right. We okay. can really get okay. we can really get so, like this, all right? You're not so gonna laugh next, at the okay. situation so you, where a okay. gun was pointed at my okay. Where a gun was okay. pointed at I, I listen to it. I listen to it. All right. No, I listen no, no. to it. I listen to it. So I don't even I know you. Number you one, I don't know you. I don't know. Don't give me no props and laugh at me at the same time. Don't give me no props and laugh at me at the same time. Yeah, let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there. Let's go there, Biggie. Let's go there, Biggie. Don't know me. You never. Let's go there, Biggie. You're a liar. You're a liar. I'm a liar. Let's go. How? How am I lying, Biggie? Biggie big, not Biggie small, but you're Biggie big. You are quote unquote. All right. Bishop in the Lord's church. That's right. You have seen my face on your timeline before, and if you say you haven't, you're a liar. I don't know you. I don't know you. I don't know you. I do not know you. I do not. Oh my God! This is. That's somebody pastor. 
they do it different in Brooklyn, dog. Okay, this is just how they. Mm, where's how Brooklyn they get down. at? I gotta go to his church. I mean, I, after they, I they catch not, them robberies, I will not be participating. No. After they catch them robbers, I'm going Even to the church. Do, I'm not going out. I won't hear nothing you got to say. I mean, mm. if he be roasting his audience like this, I mean, mm -hmm. I sit way in the back and listen mm -hmm. to him call his congregation fat and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Not no, but at the end of the day, when you come here and try to talk about me, and I don't. Damn, he turned, he made himself mute by accident. I don't know you at all. And at the end of the day, when I come on and I'm listening and I'm seeing you laughing at me, I'm sitting here, I'm laughing, yes, you laughing yeah, at he me. Hurt I don't even know you. And picking and at Larry, you here's the problem. About, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. And Larry, you want to sit here and talk about, hold here's on, hold on. Larry, and you want to sit here, you want to sit here and talk about that I spoke about homosexuality. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Ma'am, 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 ma'am. Hold on one second. Hold on one second. Nobody wants to talk to you, Biggie. Nobody wants to. He really called her fat. And he was like, There will be no retort. There will be no. You will not be saying anything back. You don't have any respect All right? for women. No, no, no. Don't talk about women now. Don't talk about women. Because because y'all laugh. Y'all laugh when, the, when, when, we, when Larry we said we about the gun and my daughter say, Y'all laugh. Y'all laugh. Not. That's no. what you did. Y'all no. laugh. That's no. what you did. And you want to say it to about if that's really true. That's what you said, Larry. And y'all laughed. And what you <laughs> did was, and what you did was you laid on your carpet. You laid on your carpet and pretended to be me. You're disrespectful. Okay. You're disrespectful. I mean, they did. If they did all that, they, they did clown them. I mean, we got to be honest. I mean, you do walk around wearing $400,000 of jury and motherfuckers are gonna think it's funny when you get your comeuppance or whatever as a pastor um it does seem kind of antithetical to everything we've learned about you know christianity but i can also see how he would be very upset that these people laughed at that harrowing situation that happened for real to him um but yeah man people gonna yeah, still go this, to his church sunday took a left turn no thank you right my god Woo. He was hot. Mm -hmm. No, I will not be attending. Mm -mm. I'm, I'm going. When I get back to New York, I'm going. <laughs> you, you, I don't know how much they charge to get up in there, but I got to. I got to see this in is person. It a cover charge. Okay. If he come out, if he give, if he give me a hot fire like that from the pulpit mm -mm. on these sinners, mm, this is this might be what I need. Nope. Uh, Karen, mm -hmm. somebody. Had a brush with some snakes on a plane. What? You and Chris's film? Uh, say so what? You and Chris's film, Snakes on a Plane. Uh, I don't know what that means. Oh, y'all made a joke about about making a movie. What? Well, no snakes on snakes in the toilet. What oh, toilet snake. Toilet oh snake. God, Karen, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, a person found snake head in their food. Oh, and it. Uh, on the plane on the plane oh what yeah a crew member started eating their crew meal and then after that a, a few bites discovered there was a snake head in their meal how did that get in there i don't know if this video is in english that's the that's the snake head in the crew meal i don't know if y'all can see it but it's sitting right there it's like the snake got his head chopped out I, where's the rest of it it must be it must be in the lasagna no i don't know it must be with the rest of the collard greens mm -mm. oh man that would have been me man everybody would be having what i was having for for lunch because i would have threw that shit all over the cockpit i was like oh we all eating motherfucking we all eating salad today because i'm no, it's not gonna be on me no thank you i, I don't want any of that mm, i just thought it was interesting oh <laughs> did they say how the person responded um i mean they didn't they didn't finish eating the meal can okay i'm glad then they now it's different if i go somewhere and they're preparing snakehead but no you just got some snakehead here's they, a sn here's they kicked open snakehead they kicked open the door at five hundred thousand feet and just jumped out <laughs> <laughs> hey, you can't blame them honestly <laughs> you know you can't uh all right let's get into some uh fucking with black people Fucking with black people. Fucking with black people. 
Uh, let's see here. Um, video body camera shows Cincinnati police officer use a racial slur while on duty. Well, I mean, when else you supposed to use it? <laughs> well, I say, well, I the mean, time. don't waste it. You don't want to waste the, the 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 racial slurs while you're off duty. Yeah, you know? nobody gonna hear him. Yeah. All right. Gotta make him count. Made by a Cincinnati police officer in uniform, recently released body cam footage here shows Rose Valentino using a racial slur and also admitting to it. WCPO 90s reporter Jake Ryle walks us through this footage. The city manager in a statement said that the body camera footage is disturbing. Officer Rose Valentino called it an isolated incident, her using a racial slur while on duty. It's April 5th. Officer Rose Valentino is pulling into CPD District 3. Several cars are parked to pick up students at Western Hills University High School. Officer Valentino activated her lights and siren to get the drivers to move. You gotta move. Honey. Ridiculous. Is she gonna just sit there? A black teen who was leaving school raised his middle finger at Officer Valentino, which set Valentino off. Oh, I hate him so much. God, I hate this world. Several seconds pass. Valentino then uses a racial slur under her breath. Fucking niggers, I fucking hate them. First of all, she was talking out loud like she knew she was being recorded. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, it's not like she was on TikTok or something, but like the way she was talking out loud was like, it, it was very perform. It was like it was for somebody else. Like, was she that confident that this tape was never going to hit the air? And if so, how often is this happening and not making the air? Because this is insane to me. Mm -hmm. Um, like was someone else in the car? Like, why was she talking like that? Mm -hmm. Was she talking to someone? Right. It sounded like else? it's almost like she was talking to somebody, justifying. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Crazy. Officer Valentino's. And she, oh, secondly, she looked like she used the N word. You know, like she just looks like an actress. She looked like if Sigourney Weaver, you know. Uh, never got an acting job, you know? Personnel file. She's a 14-year veteran with CPD. Her performance report shows she consistently meets or exceeds standards for patrolling. She trains officers who recently graduated from the academy. Oh, Her God. supervisors say she's dedicated. She trains people. All right, over here is where we had the fucking niggers. And over here is where we beat them. <laughs> and a hardworking beat officer. Adding, she comes to work with a positive, motivated attitude. Which positive about beating some fucking niggers. <laughs> and motivated to do it as well. <laughs> She's appreciated and that she does great work. She's been reprimanded in the past for not turning on her body camera multiple times. And this is- why, wonder, wonder why. why. Yeah. I fucking wonder. This, and this is what you fucking call. Imagine what you didn't catch. The fuck is this? Why aren't you turning your body camera on? Right. And the one time she turned it on and probably forgot the bitch was on, or either she was talking to somebody on the phone and forgot it was on. This is what it caught. Oh my God. The first time Officer Valentino has been on the city's radar for an issue involving race. In November 2018, she was one of three police officers involved in a lawsuit where Jerry Isham, a realtor, was showing a home to Anthony Edwards. Both are black. Court docs show she escalated the situation by aiming her gun at the two men and then putting them in handcuffs. The city settled the case for $151,000. And she was still on the force. Yep. $151,000. Your of taxpayers' money. And y'all thought, still need to keep this woman around. No way she'll fuck up again. She definitely learned her lesson from that. And in March 2020, while off duty, she pushed and punched two family members and used an umbrella to damage a car. She was convicted by plea of disorderly conduct and was referred to a behavioral health center for anger management.
even our own family not safe. Why is this person got a badge and a gun? Right. What did you think? This is actually low key getting off light that this is the worst thing that happened. Yeah. And like I said, imagine what happened when she didn't have her camera on. Right. Fast forward to the April 5th incident. According to the internal report, Officer Valentino acknowledged her statements weren't appropriate and that she was surprised the racial slur came out. And no, ma'am. Didn't rep no, I, no, I don't want you say that shit all the time. I do not want to hear that bullshit ass lie. You lying. I was surprised the racial slur came out. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. You said it in anger. You meant that shit. Chef's kiss. That is some top line racism if I've ever heard it. I don't know that. Honestly, I don't think we've ever had that excuse before. And we've done a lot of episodes, y'all. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we've ever had a, I was surprised the racial slur just came out of me. Oh, it slipped off like my left shoe. I'm not a, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I don't got a racist bone in my body has been usurped, dethroned. Dethroned. By the, by, I, I was surprised it came out. Like, she looked around the car like, who said that? <laughs> Fucking niggas, I hate them. Oh, is somebody else in this car with me? I would never. And that she was surprised the racial slur came out and that it didn't represent who she was as an officer or how she felt about African-Americans. Whatever. Right. And neither did me pointing the gun at them black dudes and us having to settle for $150,000. Mm -hmm. Did I escalate it? Neither did me beating up my family. <laughs> she claimed to have been desensitized to racially offensive language by music and hearing people talk on the street. No, ma'am. No, ma'am. I don't want to hear that. This is their favorite one. And I'm just going to go ahead and preemptively, just in case there's a black person out there somehow, but in some miraculous way, listening and considering that um, and thinking that she has a point. And it's normally you niggas that don't say nigga that fall for this. Guys, she got you. She was not confused at all. No. She did not even use it the way people use it on the street or in music. Mm -mm. She said fucking niggers. I hate them. Which Lil Dirk song got that in it? Like it might, <laughs> like we might say niggas. We might even say we hate niggas. We don't see that hard R like that. Mm -mm. And honestly, I think if you're going to use that excuse, I need you to start using it in a rap song. I'd be okay with it. If she was like, fucking niggas, I hate them. I wouldn't date them. I never rate them. It's time to get some. <laughs> like, I'd be like, oh, you know what? Oh, I kick them in the face like Jason Statham. Oh, shit. Like, oh. <laughs> At least you rhyming. Oh, okay. She must have really got this from the streets. Right, you ain't even rhyming. Like, you... This don't sound like you got it from the streets mm -hmm. at all. It sound like you got mad and you and this is your form of raging. Unless you mean the streets of Alabama police force. I don't... In that report, she said her job is having a negative impact on her mental health. That means you don't need this job. Right. Whoops. Saw it help for. According to the she saw it help for. Kid, um, therapist, I'm so glad you saw me for this. Um I'm having issues with my job. It's causing me to be racist and stressing me out, and I just need some help. Okay, all right. Well, uh, don't say the N word on camera. Oh my God, thank you. Yeah, open the shut case. This is uh, one. Of, I get this a lot. This is one of the fastest ones I've ever had. Thank you. Have a good day. That'll be uh, seventy five dollars an hour. The city manager. The disciplinary hearing process continues. We'll have more updates. Disciplinary hearing process. My guy, what? Is the process. She said it. She it admitted matter. to saying it. it what matter. would the process she, possibly she entail? Get suspended two weeks with pay and right. back on the force. It's gonna she gonna have to literally just shoot some black people up. Yep. And then we're gonna be like, oh, you know what? Oh, I think she might have been racist. I think it's she might have be been available. Jake Ryan. Oh my goodness. Zero to hundred can. Oh, just gets a Jacaris. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I give it Dracarys as well. Like, and they're clearly waiting until they're clearly waiting until she does something really even fucked worse. Up. Right. Even worse. And then they're gonna be like, okay, that was bad. Um racial slur. 
seen in TV weather forecast. Oh shit, the weather man fuck it up. Well, probably did, did the weather man uh, point at the clouds and was like, "This nigga out here in the ocean just turned to this hurricane that y'all keep talking about. It's on its way." <laughs> I mean, what is happening here? You know how we like to call nigga pe- uh, per- person, places, and things. Mm-hmm. You know, you know that wind was blowing. You know, my mama called that nigga the Hulk. I give what? it. I give it your cars as well for the last one. I forgot to say my score, but uh, yeah, this is uh, the weather. Uh, as you can see from the picture. Oh, it's just a picture. It says, this is your weather, my niggers, with a hard R. Hard R, again. Ah! Even we Who don't... Is, doing the, is we doing the weather? Hello, Des Moines. This is your weather, my niggers. Local <laughs> local eight on the eights. <laughs> or eight on the... Like, local eight on the eights. <laughs> Good morning, Charlotte, North Carolina. <laughs> we coming, Come we on. covering the weather, my niggas. They did. Let's see what that nigga talking about with that weather. <laughs> on to you, my nigga. <laughs> my nigga with the sports. On to you. <laughs> <laughs> it was cloudy with a chance of outrage. Uh, an Iowa weather station stirred up a whirlwind of backlash after an offensive racial slur inexplicably appeared on the screen. Mm. Mm-hmm. Somebody type that. The meteorologic meteorological misprint was flagged Friday in a now viral tweet by journalist Matthew Keys. I blurred it, but I'm pretty sure you can figure out what it said. He wrote regarding the alarmist race, alarming racist image, which appeared in the Des Moines-based Weather Channel's local on the eight segment. And a company screenshot shows the appalling graphic, which read, "Hello, Des Moines. This is my dear weather, my niggers." Uh, however, the Weather Channel denies that the epithet was its doing. Who did it then? Who? It showed up on your channel. It's not made up. It's not fake or false. Yeah, it's not like nobody, someone had to do it. They said this came from the cable provider. Mm Mm-mm. Oh, wait, no, actually, you know what? That's a person that is just speculating. There's just somebody on Twitter saying that. This came from the cable provider. TWC has computer units at the cable head ends to produce the local on the eights. And a rogue cable employee must have messed with the files and caused it to say that. I mean, it's not that I don't believe them, but wow. Somebody fucked up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and we will get to the bottom of it. Yeah. Somebody should not have a job after this. Right. Somebody type that, that phrase in there. A graphic during the Weather Channel's cable, Weather Cab- Channel's cable networks local on the Ace presentation last evening included a racial slur. This is what the company said. Uh, we removed this graphic as soon as we learned of it. I mean, when else would you remove it? <laughs> After you got the 50th call, we chose to leave it up for an hour just to see what's going on. Uh, <laughs> we wanted to get y'all feeling on it. We wanted to get how we want to see how y'all felt, my niggas. We was gonna take it to traffic after this, but uh, <laughs> we're gonna see how to you use, how you niggas was sitting in traffic. They wanted to use some slurs for some other races. Uh, <laughs> this did not originate with us. Uh, we're in the process of investigating it further. We apologize to our viewers. Yeah, and uh, the sad part is that that cop from the last uh story is was the weather person. So, no. <laughs> It is cloudy with a chance of getting shot from my bullets. Honestly, though, if we're being real, if they cut to the weather right now, as hot as it is, and the five day forecast just said, nigger. I I would understand. Because sometimes when I come outside this house and it's 105, but it feels like 108, honestly, it's like the sun is calling me a nigger. (laughs) Yes, the sun is like whooping my ass. Like, I don't know. Maybe, I don't know how our ancestors did it, but this is why I vote. Because that's the least I can do. This is why I vote, because I don't want to be no slave. Don't, no, you will not take my rights away. That's the least I can do is vote, because my yeah, God. hot-ass, scorching-ass sun. No, thank you. Mm-mm-mm. No, thank you. The sun probably called me a nigga the way it be whipping my ass. That's what I said earlier. But <laughs> zero to a hundred. <laughs> this right here gets a <laughs> it gets a I'm gonna give it a 50 
50. Okay. All right. I give it, uh, I think I give it like a 75. It's pretty fucked up. Yeah, it is fucked up, but it made, but I laughed. Uh, okay. It wasn't, you don't have to defend yourself. <laughs> I wasn't trying to make, anyway. All right. Let's just move <laughs> on. Uh, let's move on to some, uh, some, some guests the race. It's time to guess 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 the race. All right, guess the race time. We go around the globe, find different articles, guess the race of the people involved. A bloke claims running on all fours like a dog daily has made him crazy ripped. Yes, it had to make the news. A personal trainer said running on all fours like a dog every day for almost a year is giving him crazy rip physique. Nathan Nathaniel Nolan from Indiana has spent the last 326 days doing a bizarre exercise, which has also helped with mobility issues and pain he had been experiencing from practicing calisthenics, jujitsu, and breakdancing. First of all, it sounds like he was already in great shape. <laughs> right? I was suffering from a lot of pain in my wrists and hands and shoulder and stuff. Uh, he started doing planks and bear crawls. Some experts say burned about 100 calories every 10 minutes, which naturally progressed to his current routine. Uh, there's no inspiration coming from any sort of animals. I'm not trying to imitate anything, but the unique exercise regime has drawn comparisons to man's best friend across the internet. Nolan now does 30 to 45 minutes of this exercise a day and has performed it at the gym and in public, including in a science museum under Missouri's iconic gateway arch. You know, people was looking at him like he was out of his fucking mind. <laughs> Uh, although the work ain't may look strange, he says people rarely stop to ask what he's doing. And no shit, because they might think you're crazy and figure out you might actually try to attack them. Have you seen how many guns we have in America? Ain't nobody asking nobody shit in public. Mm -mm. You might shoot me. If I see a motherfucker and I can see a motherfucker literally walking around the store with their dick hanging out their zipper, and I wouldn't say shit. Not a mother. I might back up and decide to yeah. leave, but I'm not gonna confront them. Yeah. Yeah, I was just like, ah, right, I don't want to die. Fuck it. Uh, pretty much never. A lot of people underestimate how little people care what's going on around them. It seems no, and you know he's doing it for attention. You know he's all just fucking going to the park and then doing this shit and hoping somebody will ask and everybody's just like, leave the crazy dog man alone. <laughs> you know that's what they saying. But daddy, no, shut the fuck up. Don't look at him. Don't stare. You know how you have to tell your kids not to stare. Don't stare because then right. he'll come over here. It seems Nolan isn't barking up the wrong tree with these bizarre techniques. He said he's enjoyed noticeable changes in his body, and not all of them have been aesthetic. The areas people can't see or are harder to notice are the mobility gains I've had and how much better my body feels. He even shares his workout on TikTok, and he now has 992,000 followers on TikTok, which is why Instagram is becoming TikTok. Agree. <laughs> that explains everything. Can't guess the race. Oh, they call him a bloke, white. All right. Check the chat room to see what they believe. Uh, he watched all the seasons of One Punch Man, white. white. I did too. Um, One Punch. Attention-seeking white man, says Cypher. All right. Uh, not a lot of guesses going on in the chat. Okay. They scared? White, the correct answer is, and everyone said the same thing, white, you got it right. Yeah. Yeah, and that's pictures of him doing the exercise. Did it on the did it on the playground. <laughs> did it. You know kids we want to ask him so bad. Yeah. Mommy, why don't you don't you dig over there? Don't talk to this crazy man. He's gonna try to have you run around on all fours and shit. Right. Um, all right, here's another one. 3.3 .3 million dollar scheme. Okay. Woman arrested for running illegal business claiming to fix customers' credit issues. Uh, but uh she was she was she was lying apparently. If new floors are on your summer so she said she was fixing people's credit, but apparently she was just taking the money and <gasps> illegally making it seem like 
the people uh had gotten their their credit uh their identity stolen and then of course uh you know the police didn't like that institutions of more than 3.3 million dollars 29 year old rokisha brisby is now charged with two counts of forgery of a financial instrument according to harris county precinct 4 constable mark herman customers would request help from brisby at rose credit repair in north harris county that brisby would then uh, forge law enforcement documents and send them to financial institutions saying the transactions were fraudulent and not the customer's fault. Constable Herman saying Brisby did this at least 133 times over Dang. a two year period and that one financial institution eventually became suspicious reporting her to authorities. She used my front page of the police report with my name on it uh, to submit to these institutions. Uh, but there are other law enforcement agencies that we we feel strongly she has used their reports too. All right, there you go. That was very upset. Mm-hmm. She used my name, my good white name. <laughs> uh, all right, Karen, guess the race. Black. Karen's going black. Let's check the chat room. Oh, like everybody prom- promising that good credit nigga doing hair babysitting fix the credit same time black black hard oh. R on that file the correct answer is black <laughs> man bro Keisha yeah, was out here the name gave it away <laughs> she was out here living big trying to help people with their credit Feel bad for all the people who credit got to go back to bad now. They spent Duh. their money. You know? Now you got to fight to get the shit that she put on it off. Mm-hmm. That's how it be, Karen. All right, bonus round. Bitch, that's a bitch was why. I ain't racist. How can I be racist about anybody or anything in my life? How can I? Call them niggas. Just call them niggas. It's gold, 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 gold chain it's wearing gold, fried gold, chicken gold, and biscuit eating monkey eating baboon big die fast running high jumping spear chucking 360 degree basketball. Accused wife killer Barry Morphew pleads guilty to voting for Trump under his wife's name. A Colorado man once accused of murdering his wife pleaded guilty to casting a presidential ballot for Donald Trump in her name because he thought the Republican could use the vote. Mm, but they always claim the Democrats doing it though, right? Don't they? They always doing what they accuse some other people of doing. Mm-hmm. Barry Morphew, 53, claimed he didn't know it was illegal to fill out a ballot on behalf of a spouse. I don't believe you. And cl- told authorities he did so in his wife, Suzanne Morphew's name, just because I wanted Trump to win. I just thought, give him another vote. I figured all of these other guys are cheating. Suzanne Morphew, 49, went for a bike ride on Mother's Day in 2020 and never returned. Shit. So uh, he was like, I didn't know you couldn't vote in your wife's name. Also didn't know you couldn't kill her. And get away. A lot of shit he didn't know, apparently. Learning a bunch of stuff today in this uh, interrogation. He refused to take a polygraph in the days after her disappearance and was arrested in May 2021 on charges of murder after deliberation, tampering with physical evidence, and attempting to influence a public servant. He pleaded not guilty. Prosecutors dropped the charges in April just weeks before a trial was set to begin, saying they needed more time to locate her remains. So he's just an accused wife killer. We don't know that he did it. Um... And he just voted in her name to give Trump an extra vote, even though he still lost. she went disappearing in like May. And then he also like, why didn't y'all just bring him in on voting fraud then? You definitely would have if it was a mother that moved to another town to another district. get a child into a better school. Mm-hmm. <laughs> anyway, uh, Karen, guess the race. Oh, we all know it's white. Okay, come on, guys. We, we don't need free space. Play. Free space. We don't need to clap for that. That, that was good enough. Uh, all right, let's get to sort of ratchetness. Come on. I like that free space. No nigga ever. <laughs> we never. <laughs> ah! oh! 
Uh, deputy shoots sword wielding suspect during domestic call. And this motherfucking sword, y'all. This sword look like a fucking Star Trek sword. Like, this ain't no normal ass sword. Oh! Yeah. They're like, Ooh, what clan did he get that from? The Klingons. Um, authorities are investigating the officer involved shooting in Spotsylvania County that happened on Monday evening. Just before 6 p.m. on July 18th, deputies were called to a domestic disturbance involving a caller's son who was armed with a weapon. Officials said the suspect made death threats against a family member at the home. The deputy first arrived, uh, first to arrive, went to the home along Robinson Road and saw the suspect run to the back where the family members outside. Sheriff's office said that a deputy went to the back of the home. The man charged him with a 33-inch Spartan warrior-style sword. During this encounter, the deputy attempted to tactically relocate. However, the suspect quickly closed the distance, forced the deputy to discharge his firearm at the suspect, striking him multiple times. The deputy rendered aid until medical crews arrived. The suspect was taken in the hospital for treatment as a stable condition. Uh, Nicholas Jean Howe, 27, is charged with attempted malicious wounding of a law enforcement officer. My goodness. That, that sword was definitely, yeah, that was definitely an attempt to wound mm -hmm. uh, and, and probably murder. Should be charged with more. Yes. But them bullets, I'll take it as karma. Okay. Um, all right, that's it, y'all. Uh, we'll be back uh, later in the week. We may or may not do a show tomorrow. Friday is Balls D Sports. Uh, and the weather is going to be 80 degrees, mostly sunny and hot tomorrow. <laughs> uh, my nigga. <laughs> until, <laughs> until next time. I love you. I love you too. Bye, Bye everybody. Have a good rest of your day. <laughs>